Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and as promised, I have a fourth update in the half marathon training series for 2020. Hi viewers, old and new, I hope you're having a fantastic start to the new year. I've got another video today for you in the series of half marathon training updates, this one being number four. So the last few weeks have been really, really busy. It's obviously been that festive time, Christmas and New Year, and I have to say I had a really great time, I hope you did too. Lots of fun, festive feasts, and even a little bit of running here and there where possible. I managed to get out there relatively regularly, and I've collated together some of the key training activities that I've undertaken over the last couple of weeks for you. So just before Christmas, I've been concentrating on increasing that mileage base longer runs, slower paces, that kind of thing. I undertook a half marathon effort, so 13.1 miles at roughly seven minutes 57 per mile average pace in the Nike React Infinity run. I think it clocked in about one hour 44, something like that. So very sort of easy kind of pace, uh, the sort of pace I would use on an easy day really, just to build up that mileage base. Average heart rate clocked in at around about 145. I have been looking at a heart rate that I've been getting from the Apple Watch, and it does seem to be very much dependent on weather conditions and things like that as to this sustained level of accuracy that I receive uh, from the device. When we've got very cold weather or very wet weather, I do tend to get very odd readings at certain points in the run. Certainly, at least when heart rate starts to become elevated, the accuracy of the device seems to diminish somewhat. They had a brief stop at around about six miles just to grab some water and stuff like that, um, but it wasn't long and I soon got back out. So very consciously keeping the effort around about that endurance kind of level pace, occasionally straying into tempo. I find these really great for that kind of level of pace, uh, that kind of level of effort. They just seem to really shine in that sort of area for me. Just looking at the paces achieved, I seem to sort of up the pace a little bit towards the end of the run, 10th, 11th, 12th, and this last 13th mile, uh, which is quite promising, shows I had a lot more in the tank, and obviously showing a little bit of improved overall sort of endurance and strength over the course of the run. It felt nice and strong, felt nice and stable towards the end of that half marathon effort. So certainly a very promising workout. So Christmas Day uh, meant a quick jaunt around the local area with my buddy Oliver, making sure he had a bit of exercise. Well, I didn't want to miss out on exercise either. So I hit it for a quick three mile effort, around about seven minutes, eight seconds again in the Nike React Infinity run. I think it was about 21 minutes, 31 total. So a nice crisp kind of um, quick effort, increasing the cadence a little bit and showing that these shoes can operate at a higher pace if you want them to. So I'm about sort of 20 seconds off per mile uh, for my goal target half marathon pace, but still good to get the heart rate elevated a little bit and it enabled me to get back in time to help out a little bit with the Christmas dinner. I knew that I was gonna miss out on the New Year's Day uh, Yeovil Montacute Park Run. They kind of move it from Montacute into or nearer to the town centre uh, around about this time of year because the ground over at Montacute House becomes, well, waterlogged at times and it's not really conducive to running. So I thought, need to get out and do a faster paced effort, even at a shorter distance, just to uh, give myself an idea of where I was um, when I start to do some 5K races this year. So I think it definitely proves that the Infinity Run isn't just a long, slow, easy day shoe. I think it can operate as more of a daily trainer if you want it to. So the 28th of December, I took on a seven mile effort at around about six minutes, 53 per mile pace in the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. Clocked in at about 48 minutes, I think it was 48.18 uh, that day on the seven mile run. Kept the cadence high and kept the heart rate a little bit more elevated once again. I'm not sure whether I was very conscious of kind of all of the food and additional things that I'd eaten uh, over the course of the Christmas period but I really felt like I wanted to run faster over the Christmas period uh, rather than sort of longer, slower sort of miles. Um, and certainly I did that day. So I was very, very close to my half marathon target goal pace here. Uh, six minutes, 51 to get me in under that one hour, 30 half marathon time. So getting in close to that goal time was certainly a hard task and it felt like it. That side, the fuel cell rebels felt really good that day for that higher paced effort. 
Certainly a challenging run, but very fun, and managed to get some good tunes onto the earbuds, uh, some real blood pumping stuff, which I think probably helped. So looking at the Strava analysis for this run, it had me kind of going upwards on a constant kind of staircase, really. Um, I started off slightly slower, and by the end of the run was up to roundabout, or just under even, that half marathon target goal pace. I think I was up in the pace by about six seconds per mile as I went through each of the miles. This only wasn't a scripted thing or a deliberate thing. I hadn't set out to do that. I know some people kind of adopt these kind of pyramid style uh, runs where they increase the pace on each mile or each kilometer, but it certainly wasn't a scripted or conscious thing to do that. I think I probably just kind of slowly eased into the run and was feeling particularly good that day. It certainly does make me very interested though, again in this shoe, I grabbed it out of the box, I'm not entirely sure what sort of made me do it. I think I was thinking tempo, I was thinking kind of faster pace, and it's certainly a light shoe, that's for sure. So it's got me interested again back in the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. It's a shoe I kind of really enjoyed running in initially, uh, but it had been stuck away in the box for a little while, and I kind of was feeling a little bit sorry for it. Sorry, buddy. So I'm going to be utilising these a lot more again in the weeks to come. I think perhaps in terms of pace, this is the kind of ethos that I need to adopt in my future half marathon attempts. With this type of pace, I mean sustained, it would have been tough to do that, I have to say, uh, at the time of year that it was, uh, would have got me in, I think, just over one hour 30 uh, for the half marathon distance. So it's certainly an ethos I need to consider moving forward with my training. Heart rate, although it's sometimes to ascertain real accuracy of that on some of these training runs, certainly in colder weather, I topped out about 160 beats per minute. So there's still some room there for maneuver um, to push things a little bit further. Perhaps if I was to sustain that uh, type of pace, then my heart rate's surely gonna elevate a little bit towards the end of the run, but certainly very promising signs. So the day before New Year's Day, saw the fated first run in the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. There's more on that run in my recent Ultra Boost 20 initial review, which you can check out on my channel. To summarize, very good feeling in those shoes. I really enjoy the upper, so it feels like a quality shoe, but at perhaps seven minutes per mile pace, perhaps too much for the shoe straight out of the box. Could it be a break-in issue? There's a bit of pain there, certainly in the heel, that remains to be seen, time will tell. The 2nd of January, I felt refreshed after New Year's Eve rocking night in the local seaside town of Weymouth. Really wonderful, playing to a big crowd of people wanting to have a lot of fun. I used the Fender Jazzmaster that night, mainly in the neck position, using a brand new Fender Tweed Deluxe amp that we've managed to get hold of. Had the volume about three or four on the instrument channel and Hang on, sorry, this is a half marathon training video, not one about my guitar equipment. Though if you're interested, comment below and I'll tell you more. So 2nd of January, I had a bit of lingering pain in my right heel, or at least the outer section of my heel, from that run a couple of days before. So I had picked out the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. It's a shoe that's just ridiculously comfortable on foot and it didn't give me any pain whatsoever over a 10 mile effort. I did the typical loop that I do of uh, the town. It kind of takes me right the way around the edge back to my humble abode and clocks in around about 10 miles. I think I hit a pace of about seven minutes 09 per mile on average. Time of about one hour, 11 minutes. So not too shabby for an aged 40 year old with a girt blister on my right foot. I think these shoes do help in terms of fatigue. I felt fantastic actually when I got back. It didn't feel as if I'd run 10 miles. It felt great, legs and calves feeling really good. I think it was a really nice treat to fire around the local loop in these bright coloured road rockets. So you're going to be utilising these a little bit more in training, perhaps on some of the higher pace tempo efforts, perhaps a few of the kind of interval type runs, uh, maybe even on the longer efforts too. Uh, now I've managed to get another pair in a slightly higher size, the Ekadin. Uh, please check the video out. I'll stick it in the uh, end credits so you can check it. But want to get some more use out of these and also means that people might see me a little better when I'm running around in the dark. Okay, that's about all I've got for you today for this current half marathon training update. 
If you've got any questions, please comment below. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down here in the bottom corner. It's somewhere around here. Please make sure you like the video and share it with your friends. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.